Good morning. The Lord be with you. My name is Deb Worley, and I am the pastor of White Rock Presbyterian Church, which is in northern New Mexico, up near Los Alamos. On behalf of the Presbytery of Santa Fe, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to this time of worship. Whether you are joining us from your couch or your dining room table, or a hospital bed, or a hotel, whether you're joining on your television or on your phone, whether you live somewhere within the Presbytery of Santa Fe or somewhere across the globe, welcome. We are glad that you are with us this morning. I wanna take a moment to just thank all of the church pastors and musicians and liturgy writers and church leaders and tech savvy people who continue to contribute to this time of worship, sharing their gifts so that our time together might be meaningful. Thank you too to all of you who have joined with us to gather in worship in this digital space. Each of us is needed in order to make this time meaningful. These services have been a gift for over a year now, and they continue to be that. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for those who have participated uh, in the leadership. Thanks be to God for Facebook and YouTube and Zoom and high-speed internet. Thanks be to God, and welcome to worship. A few quick announcements. Uh, there will be some interactive elements to this service. Um, you're invited and encouraged to share any prayer requests that you have, whether joys or concerns or prayers of thanksgiving, in the chat feature if you are able to do that. There also will be a time when you will be invited to uh, share your offering, whether with your local congregation or uh, with the Presbytery of Santa Fe. And at the end of the service, you will be invited to pass the peace of Christ to someone in your congregation uh, or to someone that you know who might need a word of encouragement or comfort. Uh, you can certainly send an email or a text or a phone call or sit down and write a note in the mail, but in some way we will encourage you to find a way to pass the peace of Christ. If you'd like to know more about the Presbytery of Santa Fe, you can find information on our Facebook page. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel, or you can go to santafepresbytery.org for more information. We hope that you will make an extra effort to join us next Sunday, May 16th, as we celebrate our graduates uh, from high school and college in particular, um, with that service being led by youth from around the presbytery. And now I invite you to take a deep breath, center your spirits and still your hearts and minds as we prepare to worship God. Welcome to worship.
Please join me in the call to worship. We come with joy to this celebration of God's love. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive your love. We come with hope to this witness to God's power. Challenge and encourage our spirits to serve you, Lord. We come with a willingness to proclaim God's presence to all. We thank God for this invitation to worship, witness, and serve. Amen. As we turn to God in this time of worship and praise, let us also acknowledge and confess our sin before God and one another, seeking God's mercy and grace. Let us pray. Holy God, we bow before you in prayer, knowing that our lives have not been holy. We are sorry for the words we have said and actions we have done that go against your intent and vision for our lives. We regret the times we have overlooked the needs of those around us. We are sorry for those times when our lives revealed a lack of faith and trust in you. We long to embrace your command to love neighbor as self and for fuller communion with sisters and brothers in Christ. Merciful God, forgive us. Renew us in all ways during this Easter season. Help us to live life by your promise, strength and grace. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. It is because of this we can be assured that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives us all of our sins strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. Amen. The scripture today is from the Gospel according to John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. The most apt passage for today on the theme of love and discipleship. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that, you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Nuestra lectura esta mañana 
viene del el Evangelio de San Juan, capítulo 15, versículos 9 a 17. Yo los amo a ustedes como el Padre me ama a mí. Permanezcan, pues, en el amor que les tengo. Si obedecen mis mandamientos, permanecerán en mi amor. Así como yo obedezco los mandamientos de mi Padre y permanezco en su amor. Les hablo así para que se alegren conmigo y su alegría sea completa. Mi mandamiento es este, que se aman unos a otros como yo los he amado a ustedes. El amor más grande que uno puede tener es dar su vida por sus amigos. Ustedes son mis amigos si hacen lo que yo les mando. Ya no los llamo siervos, porque el siervo no sabe lo que hace su amo. Los llamo mis amigos, porque les he dado a conocer todo lo que mi Padre me ha dicho. Ustedes no me escogieron a mí, sino que yo los he escogido a ustedes, y les he encargado que vayan y den mucho fruto, y que ese fruto permanezca. Así, el Padre les dará todo lo que le pidan en mi nombre. Esto, pues, es lo que les mando, que se aman, amen unos a otros. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When I was a kid, I learned a song, and I don't remember the tune anymore, but these are the words. This is my commandment, that you love one another that your joy may be full, is a paraphrase of the scripture we just heard read in English and in Spanish. Sometimes when we hear Bible stories, they can be hard to understand. This reading that we just heard from the Gospel of John repeats itself. It's hard to follow, and it uses complicated words. Even for adults, it can be hard to understand. That's something that happens more often than us adults want to admit. The stories in the Bible aren't always easy to understand. And sometimes it's even harder to follow what the stories say is the right thing to do. One of the ways we help ourselves understand those stories is through singing. Today, we're gonna to sing three hymns. Well, we sang the first one already, it's a very old hymn, and we sang it in Latin. The words we sang were, Ubi caritas et amor, Deus ibi est. In English, we sang, Live in charity and steadfast love. God will dwell with you. And dwell is a fancy way of saying live. This hymn reminds us that when we live our lives loving the world, God is with us. And after I finish my time with you, Reverend Harry is going to preach. And then when he's finished preaching, we're going to sing a hymn called Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. And that hymn describes some of the ways that God loves us and how important God's love is in our lives. Here in New Mexico, we know how important rain and wind and sun are. And in this hymn, we will sing to God, you are my rain, my wind, my sun. And at the end of worship, we'll sing a hymn called, In Christ There Is No East or West, where we remember that in Jesus we are all one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide world. It means we're all one community together, one giant church. All of these hymns help us understand the scripture we heard. They remind us that God loves us and that God wants us to love each other. They remind us that we are called to love the whole world. And we can sing the hymns to help us remember those lessons and to remind us of them when it feels really hard to love the whole world. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. Jesus, 
You promise to be our friend. Help us to love each other like you love us. Thank you for songs that help us remember your promise and that help us live like you want us to. Amen. And now we come to the message today on Mother's Day. My name is Harry Edwards, pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Santa Fe. And so glad to be able to talk with you more about this scripture from John 15, 9 through 17, as it applies to Mother's Day. Mother's Day is always an important day in the church. It's the fifth Sunday of Easter, but we know it as Mother's Day. And it brings back a lot of emotions within the congregations that I've served through the years. Emotions of people who have a mother and, and love her so much, and they express that on a day like this, and we celebrate motherhood. But it's also a time when people gather remembering their moms that are no longer with them, or remembering growing up with a mom that wasn't the ideal mom that they had hoped for. All of these emotions clash today as we gather together for this message. So let us begin then with that prelude, with the prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious and holy God, this day we come to you as you come to us. This day in the season of Easter with new life and anticipation, this day of Mother's Day when the culture celebrates a day of loving one another. Be with us then as we ponder those words in your story. Be with us in our hearts and our minds in our living. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. My mother told me yesterday that she loved me. These words were expressed to me by a former church secretary of a church I served years ago. She came to my office and she shared the story that yesterday her mother told her that she loved her. And wiping tears from her eyes, this daughter told me that the first words of love that she ever received from her mom. Oh, she was in her 50s now. She grew up without a mom expressing that love to her. And she finally did it. But wiping more tears from her eyes, she told me that my mom's now in a wheelchair and she has dementia. She has no idea who I am. I help her out, I comb her hair, I fix her meals, I do all of this for her. And she told me yesterday, I don't know who you are, but I love you. And she couldn't say anything more, overcome by emotion. Can you imagine going through life yearning for your mom to say, I love you, and it only comes when her mom became a stranger through dementia? And how many of you have ex experienced something similar of yearning for that love in your life from a mother or a father, just to feel loved and protected and safe? Well, today, we ponder all of that. And I begin with a question. Why can it be so hard for us to say, I love you to one another, or to show our love to one another, or to express those emotions? Why can it be so difficult? Well, love seems all around us, does it, does it not? It, it, it's part of our culture in so many ways. It's in our movies, it's in our books, it's in our conversations, but it's not often in our reality. Why is that? You know, perhaps it's just the culture we live in that it isn't one that's based on love, it's based on perhaps competition or, or power or, or wealth or money, whatever that might come out to be in our own culture. Or maybe because we just don't know how to love one another, we haven't seen it happen enough that we might make it part of our own living. Perhaps it's because there are too many expectations of loving one another or that the person is hoping that we are a different person that might sway to their own way of thinking, their own way of being loved. Maybe it's our 
judging one another in our conversations, that we are apt to look for the flaw in another person more than agreeing with them. Maybe it's simply that the pressures of life get in the way. The reasons why we don't love one another as we perhaps should or could or hope we, we might be able to. But when I think about it more deeply, perhaps then we get down to this, that we don't trust one another. We don't let people know what we're thinking or that what we really want. We don't share that, worrying about whether we'll be given a no instead of a yes or open arms. Or maybe then we just don't love ourselves. That we don't hear it enough, that we don't think that we're worthy enough to be loved. For if somebody really knew us, would they really love us? But Jesus has something to say about this. Scholars call it the final discourse in John, when Jesus gathered with his disciples for a final conversation with them. He told them what lay ahead. It would be one of struggle and one of pain and one of death. But he wanted to give them a good word. He wanted to show them of his love for them for all they've been through together, through the years, through the months of walking together, of his teaching them, these final words. He spoke those words as the John community knew so well. In a situation of turmoil in their culture, of Roman oppression, of what Rodney Starks said one time, of a culture of casual cruelty, how difficult it was to live back then, and then to hear these words. They would lose their friend, their mentor, their, their Christ, in fact. What does it mean then to love one another? What does it mean to hear these words? Well, Jesus told them what it would mean. He said he had one command for them, and they must have been thinking that of all the things that he's taught them, what would be that one command? What is the most important thing that they were to remember once he was gone? And the command is simply this, to love one another as I have loved you. And we can pass that off as Jesus talk or as church talk, words that we though are often overused and, and often underutilized. But Jesus gives us that one command that Reinhold Niebuhr talked about in his book, The Purpose of the Church and His Ministry. Well, Reinhold Niebuhr, one of the great theologians of the 20th century, gives us some ideas about what love really means. He said this, when we love one another, we are saying that we are rejoicing at the mere thought of the other. Imagine that, to find joy in our life by thinking of another person, one that we cherish and love, and that joy is a response to that. He says when we love one another, we are saying that we accept that person the way that person is. We're not trying to change the person or make that person in our own image or to reflect our own values, or to refashion that person into the ways that we want that person to look. When we love one another, we are saying that we have a loyalty to that person's cause, to what that person loves, to cherish that as well. When we love one another, neighbor says, we are saying that we want what's best for the other person. Perhaps that fills out the idea of love. For Jesus expressed that love to us. And he did that for his friends. An important note in this passage is that Jesus 
really calls us his friends, calls his disciples his friends. And that's a real differentiation between what a lot of the people back in that culture really thought of other people. Many of the people lived back then as slaves or servants. It's the same name in Greek, doulos, servant or slave. They always had an obligation to meet the needs of the master. But Jesus calls us friends, not to be obligated to him, but to understand that he is to be a friend to us as we are a friend of his. Of his. We are to learn from him as he learns from us. We are to share those difficult times with him as he shares with us. To be friends with him puts us on a level greater than a slave or a servant. In fact, what he's doing is announcing in this passage a new relationship of understanding of how we deal with one another. At the very time they are feeling the least secure and that they will soon abandon Jesus, Jesus gives them the dignity and also the responsibility of being friends or the definition of philos in Greek, friend, a one way we love one another. A definition is simply that friends are those who are loved. Well, I hope you feel it this way today, that you are loved, that perhaps you had a wonderful childhood and that you had parents who loved you deeply and you know that love to this very day. But if you didn't, remember the love that Jesus offers us. To know that Jesus is extending that love to his friends, that you are indeed a friend then of Jesus. Do you have friends like that now that you might see a sense of the love that Niebuhr talked about, the love that Jesus is talked about? Whenever I think of friends, I think of the day my brother was killed in a car accident some 18 years ago. It was a shock to all of us, and my parents never got over it. And I had some dear friends who stayed with me during those dark, deep, terrible days of loss. One flew out from California to Chicago. Another one drove to be with me. They were old friends from school days, but they became deeper friends. In those days, they simply sat and listened to me. They wanted what was best for me, I know. They cared for me. They, they, they sat next to me. They, they kept me close. Where at the end, when they needed to leave, I told each one of them, I said, I, you know, I lost a brother, but I gained two. In many ways, that's what friendship is to me. That's what the love of friends do for me, and I always think of them now as my brothers. Oh, how we love one another, and how God has loved us. From the time he heard of slavery in Egypt, he, he had loved us so deeply that he called us forth out of slavery into a promised land. How God loves us so deeply that God takes us from our Babylons and returns us home. How God loves us so deeply when he hears the cries of oppression, the cries of injustice, that he raises up prophets so that justice might roll down like mighty waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Oh, we know those words. God loves us so deeply that Jesus Christ comes into the world, into a dark world, a dark world of casual cruelty, and shows us the ways to love. Oh, God loves us so deeply this very moment. Though we may not always know how to love or what it feels like to be loved or that sometimes like my friend in the beginning who said that her mom told her 
for the first time she loved her, but she was a stranger. Well, God loves us deeply now because God knows exactly who we are. And God loves us still. So thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, our everlasting mother, we pray today for our whole human family. We pray for the world that you created and called good, groaning under the weight of human greed and consumption, of climate change, the global pandemic, of the many isms of our lives. We pray for health and for wholeness for all of your creatures. We lift up to you all those who hunger for food or justice, those who lack homes or human dignity. So many are unknown to us, yet each is known to you and is your beloved child. We pray for the church in the world, redeemed by Christ, dedicated to service, called to love. We pray for our presbytery, for each of our congregations set in this community, to light the way to your grace and truth. Emmanuel, God with us, give comfort to those who are ill or sorrowing, for those of us who are concerned for loved ones, for all people making difficult choices today. May we all know that nothing is able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. On this Mother's Day, we pray for all those for whom this day is joyful, and for all those for whom it is bittersweet or just plain bitter. God, we give you thanks for mothers and for those who mother us, for birth mothers, foster mothers, adopted mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, single mothers, community mothers, spiritual mothers, stepmothers. We pray for those for whom Mother's Day can be complicated or painful. We pray for comfort for those who have lost their mothers this year and mothers who have lost their children. We pray for people who don't know their mothers and mothers whose children have been taken from them. We pray for healing and wholeness for those who have difficult or estranged relationships with their mothers and mothers with their children. We pray for your presence with all people who suffered abuse or neglect at the hands of their mothers. God, may they know that you hear them and we hear them. We pray for all women whose relationship with motherhood is complicated, who this day feel loss or grief. We pray for women who have had abortions and women who have placed children up for adoption. 
We pray for those who have lost children through miscarriage, failed adoptions, stillbirth, and children running away. We pray for women experiencing infertility and who long or have longed to be mothers, but are not. God, may we remember that you are indeed the mother of us all, that you see us, hear us, accept us, and love us exactly as we are on this day. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are called to love one another, sharing what we have, that all might have enough. I invite you to visit your congregation's website if they have online giving to make a gift in support of their ministry. If they don't have online giving, consider writing a check and mailing it in. You can also give to the Presbytery of Santa Fe's Family to Family Fund, which is supporting those hardest hit by the new realities of social distancing. I invite you to give generously. Bendito eres, oh Dios, creador de todas las cosas. En tu gran bondad nos ha bendecido con estos dones, nuestro ser, nuestro tiempo y nuestras posesiones. Úsanos y usa lo que tenemos para alimentar al mundo con tu amor, por aquel que se dio a sí mismo por su pueblo, Jesucristo, nuestro Señor y Salvador. Amén. There is no east or west in him, no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ shall true hearts everywhere. Oh. 
And now we come to the benediction for our Presbyterian worship service. And every benediction I have on Sundays here at the First Presbyterian Church of Santa Fe, I usually find myself quoting my dog Pippin. Why do I do that? Because Pippin represents to me the love of creation and the love of a dog for humans, as Pippin's licking me now. He embodies that sense of feeling wanted and so I have Pippin in my arms today for these final words of benediction. Whereas Jesus had those final words of a command to love one another, we go out with those words and similar words of, of, that sound like this. Let us go forth into the world in peace, cleanse of our sins, and loving one another. Yes, loving one another. And do not render evil for evil but support the weak and strengthen the faint-hearted. And remember that command. This great command of Jesus that we love one another by cherishing each other, by loving the person as they are, by caring for them, listening to them, walking with them, accompanying them, in the good days and the bad. And by doing so, we are setting an example for the world. That indeed, this kind of love, this deep love that God shows to us, transforms the world. Oh, may it start again now, this day, as we go forth from this place, with this love in our hearts to share with the world. And so, may this love of God in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us, go with us, remain with us, until we meet again. Amen.